Are you ready to unlock the power of God in your life? Welcome to Hightower Ministries Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Ordeen, and I, along with my husband, Bill, will bring forth prophetic preaching and teaching that will unlock a deeper revelation of God's Word. So get ready for a powerful word that will raise your faith to believe God for more in your life today. Hello and welcome to Greater Glory. I'm Kara. And I'm Bill. And we're High Tower Ministries. And we are looking forward to all that the Lord is going to do through this word today all over the world. Amen. Amen. And don't forget, share this right now. Share it on Messenger. Share it in your timelines, please. That's right. Let everybody know. So we look at the scripture that we just read in Genesis chapter 3. And, and we break down the many different things that God is wanting us to see and there's an apparent assumption that Adam and his wife, Eve, walked with God in the cool of the day on a regular basis, if not every day. So the scripture says that they heard the sound of the Lord God walking. So we understand that the fact that they recognized the sound that God made entering in the garden was a normal occurrence for both Adam and Eve Amen. to experience. Amen. You know, we can really recognize the Lord speaking to us if we spend time with him every day. Absolutely. And that's how we hear in his voice and really recognize that God is speaking to us. Yeah. We have to have work on that relationship with the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, you know, it, it, it must have been an amazing time uh, to, to walk in such a wonderfully beautiful place as the Garden of Eden with the creator of all things in heaven and on earth. Amen. God in all his glory and majesty, walking with his creation and communing with them and explaining to them the plans he has for them. Amen. Amen. What a treasure that they had been, uh, been, been being able to have such an innocence and a, a sinless and a in peace. Uh, in their in their lives, Amen. it was such a treasure for them. And oh, what would they have done differently if they had only known what lied ahead of their decision to disobey the command of God? How much differently things would have been to see Adam take a stand against the serpent known as the devil? It's so true. Come on, he had total dominion over all things on earth. That's what the Bible says. He had dominion. He had the ability to take control of the situation and render the serpent powerless with his words. He could have cast the devil out of that garden. Adam should have spoken up and protected his mate and his dominion. That's right. Amen. But instead, he went against the Lord God's command. Amen. In Genesis 2, 16 and 17, it says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And he meant dying spiritually. That's right. Absolutely. So separated from the relationship that he so enjoyed having with God. That's right. Amen. So why did Adam go against what the Lord God commanded him not to do? God had given everything on earth to Adam. He was told there was one tree out of all the trees and all that was in the garden to not touch or eat of the fruit. How much different would it be if the command to not eat of that one tree would have been obeyed? Yes. We will never know. Mm. Come on. But God, he already had a redemption plan. Amen. Yes, he did. Come on. We need to have an understanding that we too have the, can have that garden experience that Adam and Eve experienced mm -hmm. through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're able to walk in the garden with God anytime we want to. He gave us that. Mm, that's so right. Wonderful. Through Jesus yeah. Christ. We can call on God any time of day and he will answer. Amen. He's waiting and walking and speaking every hour of the day. And we need to enter the garden of, of his presence. That's right. And commune with him. Amen. 
Come on, that's on us to do. That's He's fine. already there. He's waiting on us. We have to have an ear to hear. Come on. Come on. And because he's always speaking. That's right. God is always moving forward, but we have to be able to hear him. And the only way we understand how to hear him is through that intimacy and, and seeking him. And you learn mm -hmm. how he speaks. Amen. Amen. You know, it's, it's in the cool of the day that God will speak to us and share with us his plans for our lives. Mm -hmm. It's in the cool of the day that our hearts are open and our spiritual ears are open. And our spiritual eyes are, are open that will allow us to know the answers to the questions we have been asking God about and interceding over. It's in the garden. Amen. It's in the garden that we will find ourselves and, and find God's purpose for us. It's in the garden experience that you will find your breakthrough moment. That's it's right. in the garden experience that will strengthen you in your weakness as you lean on the Lord. Amen. It's that God, it's that experience. It's the kingdom of heaven. That's right. That's in us. Yes. And and he's in us. Amen. 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 Proverbs 3, 1, 1 through 6 says, My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. That's right. And it says, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck and write them upon the tablet of your heart. Mm -hmm. Put God's word in your heart. Yeah. Amen. He writes his word on your heart Amen. as you meditate on his word. Amen. It says, so, so shall thou find favor and good understanding in, this, in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto the, thy own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Come on. Amen. Amen. It's in the garden. Come on. Say with me right now. <laughs> it's in the garden. It's in the garden. Yes. Yes. Every decision you will ever make should be made with the understanding that the most precious place you possess is your place in the garden. It's in the kingdom of heaven. Come on. It's the, the kingdom realm. Yes, because we can easily go from our garden of Eden to the garden of decision that can remove us from walking in the cool of the day in that beautiful garden with God. That's right. We see over and over through the Bible that when someone is in the garden of decision, it can alter the course of their life and the generations to come as well. Mm -hmm. The greatest of these decisions was made by Adam and Eve, and their decision to disobey God brought sin into the world. With that one decision, the entire plan of God that he intended changed from one of peace and beauty mm -hmm to one of death and the curse on the earth outside of his covenant blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, scripture says that Adam and Eve hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees in the garden. How quickly things changed for them. Mm -hmm. And we see in the previous verse, Genesis 3, 7, it says, and the, the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked. And they, they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. So they began to see through the eyes of sin and recognize their own nakedness, and they were ashamed of their nakedness. They lost God consciousness and gained self-consciousness. They lost the power to do good and gained the power to do evil. So instead of becoming like God, they became unlike him in that he has the power, come on, to do only good. Now they had a choice. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Adam lost that glorious sinlessness and innocent looking continence comparable to that of Elohim. Mm -hmm. Come on, are you seeing that? What he lost, what we all lost? One decision. Are you seeing the picture that the Bible is relating to the actions of our decisions? How a good decision will keep us in the garden and an evil decision will remove us from the garden? One decision allows our eyes of understanding to be enlightened to one degree of sinlessness, 
or to another degree of sinfulness, mm. both leading us either toward God or away from God. It's so important to protect your garden existence That's right. from the things that would tear you away from God. That's why it's so important to read your Bible. That's right. Come on. That way, when you are faced with the decision, you'll have the word of God to back you up and help you. Well, you know, Come on. We, we renew our minds with yeah. the washing of the word. And, and it's the word of God that gives us a clear, you know, it, it, he washes our minds free mm-hmm. of, of a lot of the sin and things that we've, we, those memories. Mm-hmm. And, and he, he begins to change our mindsets. That's right. And so like you're saying, the decisions that we make every day have a much, much more impact on your future than most of us realize. And, uh, and you know, that the whole saying, what would Jesus do, mm-hmm. you know, should have, that should be very much so on the front of our minds when we make decisions every day, yeah. because if we were putting on God's righteousness, putting on his right choices, seeking first the kingdom of heaven and putting on his righteousness, he says, he'll add everything else to us. That's right. So we, we do that by choosing to do his will Amen. obedience is so important yeah uh you know and, and, and it's important to our future that's right and so james 4 <laughs> 7 through 8 says submit yourselves therefore to god resist the devil and he will flee from you draw nigh to god and he will draw nigh to you come on isn't that a comforting scripture right there yeah. your decisions determine your destiny Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Your decisions determine your destiny. You and you alone are held responsible for your decisions. The Bible Bible tells us to stay close to God and resist the devil. And in our resistance of the devil and because of our closeness to God, the devil will flee. And a promise comes right after verse 7 and verse 8. The Bible tells us to draw nigh to God. Get as close as you can to God, and he will draw nigh to you. He will get as close to you as he can. That tells me that he will live inside of me. Right? That's as close as he gets to us. He he gave his own spirit, the Holy Spirit, to live in us. That's how close he wants to be to you. Mm. Yeah, man. come on. He wants to be a breath away. He can't as get close. any closer than that. That's right. In here, that's as close as he desires to be because mm-hmm. he is in you. And because of that, you are in him. Hallelujah. I was just communing with the Lord last week and I said, Lord, I want you so close to me. He said, and I heard him say, I'm only a breath away. Mm. I'm close to you as your breath. Come on. And I was like, praise God. (laughs) Don't ever keep your presence from me, Lord. Wow. Amen. Amen. Look at at Genesis 3, verses 9 through 12. It says, And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, "I, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree? Whereof I commanded thee that you should shouldest not eat? And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to me, with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Come on. We see in verse 10 that Adam made a fourfold confession right here. First, he said, I heard. So he acknowledged the the acknowledgement of God in the garden was right there. Mm -hmm. Secondly, he said, I was afraid. So guilt was discovered by Adam. And then thirdly, I was naked. The effect of sin uh, was entering Adam. Mm. And fourth, I hid myself. That is the result of guilt that Adam had felt. Mm. So we read in verse 11, God asking Adam two questions. First, who told you that you were naked? And second, Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Come on, when confronted with these questions, the natural instinct of man came into play immediately. Adam tried to cover his sin. 
And he placed the blame on the woman. This is the first instance of blame shifting. <laughs> it sure is. And this is a result of sin. Yes. And this sin nature entered into Adam and Eve. That's right. He said, Eve gave it to me. But listen to what he actually said in verse 12. And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. So he actually blamed God also. He said, the woman that whom thou hast given to be with me. So we have to ask ourselves, how far will we go when we are found guilty of sin? Come on. Who will we try to place uh, the guilt on? This is the most difficult decision we must make. Point to someone else and place our sin on them or confess our sin and ask forgiveness. Come on. Right? Yes. We all know the correct answer, but have fallen short sometimes, myself included. Oh, Lord, that you would grant us the strength to rise above our own flesh. But there's good news, everyone. Amen. God does give us that strength. It's through the blood of his son. That's right. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, mm. that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2, 1 through 10 says, and you have have he quickened who were dead in, in trespass and sins where in times past you walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air and the and the spirit that now walketh in the in the children of disobedience among whom also we all had our conversations in times past in the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and, the, and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ by grace. It was by his grace yeah. that we're saved. And he hath raised us up together and made us sit made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, yes. that in the ages to come, he might show the exceedingly riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace, you are saved through faith. We're saved by faith in the finished work of the cross. Mm -hmm. We're saved by faith and that, that not of ourselves, it's not of ourselves, it's not anything we can do, amen? It is the gift of God, mm -hmm. not of works. We can't, we can't uh, cause ourselves to be saved. We need the grace of God. Least any man should boast. For we are the workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Hallelujah. Come on. You know, when you're standing in the garden of decision, you must identify the surrounding circumstances. That's that means right. use your spiritual discernment to make sure you stay away from any trap the devil will throw at you to get you into a compromising situation. You got to make sure you use the nine fruits of the spirit as your guide. Amen. Well, you know, God, the Holy Spirit will help us through the gift of discerning of spirits mm -hmm. and, and through the nine gifts of the spirit. And, uh, you know, that a lot of people call that the, their knower, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's your leaning on the spirit of the Lord. Amen. Galatians 5.22 says, but the fruit of the spirit, this is, this is the fruits of the spirit in us mm -hmm. that we're shining forth to the world. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. This is peace that only God can give. This is a joy found from the, was, it's given to us by the Holy Spirit. You know, it's, it's love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, which that means self-control. Against such, there is no law. The end of the verse of this scripture, it says something quite interesting. So what does it mean when it says, against such, there is no law? It means that no law can condemn anyone with the fruit of the Spirit. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. If you've got the fruit of the Spirit in you, come on, 
you can't be condemned because law only condemns sin, not righteousness. So as long as you live by and possess the fruits of the spirit, you will avoid the entrapment of the devil. And in turn, you will remain in the garden, walking in the cool of the day with God. That's right. Amen. Come on. The Garden of Eden was sealed off from Adam as well as the river of life that flowed from the garden because of the fall of man into sin. And the book of Revelation tells us that. Yes. In chapter 22, 1 through 5, it says, and he showed me a pure river of water, the water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. This is in Revelation. This is precious. This yeah. is so wonderful. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the, of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads, and there shall be no night there. They, they, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Come on, so God's promises... Uh, to all Christians, is a new Jerusalem mm. will be built here on earth, yes. right? And there will be a new Garden of Eden created, flowing from his throne, the word of God says. That's right. And we will reign with him forever. Come on. Hallelujah. When until that glorious day, when we enter into the new Jerusalem and the new garden, we must preserve the garden that Jesus paid for us to have here now. He paid for our sin with his precious blood. His life he gave freely that we may be reconciled with God the Father. So stay in the garden and resist the temptations of the devil. Mm. Remember the covenant blessings that God made with us in Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14 are yours. That's right. They're mine. They're ours, right? They are the fruit on every tree in the garden that God gave for us to enjoy. Come on. And they'll be multiplied unto us. They are the promises of increase and prosperity. They are the protection from all enemies, great and small. They are health and long life. If we walk in the commandments and statutes that we were given for us to obey, mm -hmm. our garden will be protected. That's right. God will do what he says he will do. Amen. Amen. He is not a man that he should lie. That's right. You know, the, the, the nine fruits of the spirit is really the true measuring stick of your your spiritual walk and your spiritual maturity mm -hmm. and and it's how the lord transplants his character and his nature in us and it, and it, those fruits of the spirit grow up in us mm -hmm. by faith Amen. by reading the word of god by hearing the word by prayer and in intimacy with the lord you know spending time with him god, god waters that garden yes he does and he grows those fruits of the spirit and when those fruits of the spirit the more that they grow up in us the more that we look like the image of Christ to the world. Amen. You may be the only Jesus that it, that someone ever sees. That's very true. I mean, until they, until they go to eternity, mm -hmm. you know? And so it, it matters how we conduct ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you know, it really is our highest calling. It's not, it's not how much anointing flows through you. Uh, it, it is, it's how spiritually mature you are mm -hmm. and how much are you, uh, reflecting God's image to the world Come on, because we're supposed That's to be right his there. hands and his feet. Yeah. Amen. And, and if you, if the, if the fruits of the spirit are growing up in you, uh, likewise, the Holy Spirit's going to move through the nine gifts of the spirit. And they, they flow together. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's right. First Peter one sixteen says, because it is written, be ye holy as I am holy. Come on. That is something that we all should live by. Amen. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Let your communication be holy. Yeah. You know, if um, stop yourself when you see that it's that your that the conversation is 
is not honoring God Mm -hmm. because you're, when you're born again, you're never alone. You're never alone. That's right. And, and when you, when you, um, put yourself in situations where you're saying something, maybe you shouldn't say Mm -hmm. God is in you. That's right. So you're causing him to hear everything that you're, that you're saying, and you're causing him to see everything that you're seeing, watching, watching. Right. So, um, so be be aware mm-hmm. that when you're born again, you are not alone. The Holy Spirit really does reside in you. And, uh, and it, he doesn't check out and leave when you leave the church house on Sunday. <laughs> um, and, and then you got the rest of the week and he's not in you. That's not the way it works. No. He's always in you. He's always there. He says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. That's right. That means I'll never physically leave you mm-hmm. and I'll never turn my heart away from you. Even if you fall, even if you do things you're not supposed to do, you know, be quick to repent. Yeah. Uh, God, he forgives. He is the God of second chances. Oh, and third and fourth and Come thousands on. and thousands of right. chances. But uh, we don't use that as an as a uh, free ticket to sin. But no. don't don't allow the enemy to beat you up if you have a problem right. with something. Uh, just come to the Lord, and, and He gives grace and He yeah. helps us. Amen. Amen. Come on, there's no better thing we can do than pass the test that Jesus gave in Matthew sixteen twenty four and twenty five. It says, "Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me." Let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. That's right. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Amen. Come on. This was the beginning of Jesus preparing the disciples for their Garden of Gethsemane experience and Jesus's purpose being fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Come on. We all will have our Garden of Eden. And our Garden of Gethsemane experiences. It's how we deal with the experiences that will determine us worthy of being in the Lamb's Book of Life. Come on. And we're going to close with this. It's not good enough to say, I'm a good person. No. And I do all this charity work. (laughs) Because Jesus says in Matthew 7, 21 through 23, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Iniquity is repeated, unrepented sin. That's right. Come on. Allow your life to be a life that shows the love of Christ. Allow the world to see that you have the light of Christ. That's right. Allow your time spent here in this temporal place to reflect the time you spend in the garden with God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come Amen. on. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this word, Lord. And Father, we just ask that we are, are given the, the ability to reflect on our own garden walk. Father, allow us to, to correct the things that need to be corrected. Father, and allow us to build on strength on the things that we already have so that we can have an even closer walk with you, Lord. Father, we thank you for this time, God, that we are able to to have this word go forth, Lord, and touch the hearts of those, Lord God, that need to hear these things so that they can course correct. Father God, we ask that you touch each and every listener, each and every watcher of this broadcast, Father God. Touch them right where they are, Father God. Heal them if they need a healing, Father. Touch them, Father, and and God, work on their hearts, Lord God. Father, Father, allow them to see what they're doing right and what they need to to change, Lord, so that they can have that walk with you. So we thank you, Father God, that you are a God that healeth. You are a God that loveth. And you've done it over and over for every one of us, Lord. Thank you. So we say, God, do it again for those that are here with us tonight. 
Father, we thank you and we pray these things in the Lord Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Well, we thank you for joining us here at High Tower Ministries International for our Greater Glory broadcast. And we hope that this show has edified and encouraged you in the Lord. We ask you to reach out to us and share your comments. We want to hear from you. If you have a prayer request, you can send that to prayer request at hightowerministries.org. That's right. Get connected by registering with us on our website, and you'll receive a free download at hightowerministry.org. And prayerfully consider becoming a partner with Hightower Ministries. This ministry needs your support and is good ground to sow into as we are reaching the world with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, and it's simple to do right on our website. You can go to our donate page month and become a partner. And uh, any amount will help this ministry. So we encourage you to do that. Amen. You know, we ask you also to uh, don't miss our shows on Facebook. Look up, look us up on Facebook. Stay connected with our Facebook page. Like it and uh, share it out with your friends. We have Greater Glory shows that go out. It's prophetic teaching and preaching every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. And also at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And on Wednesday evenings also at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we also have Testimony Tuesdays every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. We go live. Many times we have a guest. Uh, we have prophets and apostles, a lot of people in the fivefold ministry that will come on and help to minister the gospel and uh, share their testimony. Amen. Absolutely. And while you're online, look us up on YouTube at Hightower Ministries International and subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss a show. Amen. Come on. And you can take us on the go by downloading our free podcast at Hightower Ministries Podcast. And you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iTunes and Audible or WDNShows.com or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And pastors, we're available for your conferences and guest ministry schedule. So contact us at bookings at hightowerministry.org. Amen. So thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to share this message with your friends and on your timelines. And until next time, be blessed. Be blessed. Thank you for listening to the Hightower Ministries podcast. Our shows are broadcast each week on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. For more information about this ministry and to acquire our resource materials for spiritual growth, visit our website at www.hightowerministry.org. Look for Hightower Ministries on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Get connected with us. We would love to hear how the Lord is moving through this ministry and how the Word of God is impacting your life. Until next time, be blessed. And please don't forget to rate and review on Apple Podcast and subscribe wherever you listen so you don't miss a show.